Greetings fellow humans, Brad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at another Royal Clutch Keyboard. I can't even say how many years I've owned the RK61. And I'd say probably many who have been in the hobby for a while probably have at least one RK board, one Royal Clutch board somewhere around and may still even be in use. I know I still have a couple of the ones that I, old ones, they're more sentimental, but I modded them to make them sound and feel as good as possible. And I quite enjoyed the experience and I learned a lot through that process. But Royal Kludge has not only been a stalwart in the community, as far as always providing a good selection. Now granted, they only just recently started to do a gasket mounting, but that's fine. They always had a good selection of keyboards at a very affordable price. So it was a good entryway, especially when custom keyboards you know, that had QMK via were group buys or several hundred dollars, much more expensive. At least there was an option to spend many times, you know, less than $60 to get a pretty decent keyboard that had a lot of the features that people were looking for. But today we're taking a look at the RK R65. This is not only a gas mounted 65% with a knob, but it's also QMK. Yes, you heard me right. And I actually have a link to the source control tree. So we're gonna be taking a look at that as we get into it. But first things first, let's go ahead and open it up. Let's see what we've got inside of the box with the Royal Kludge R65. Now, first things first, I do like to take a look at what's inside the box and what's included with the keyboard before we actually get to it. Looks like we have a really nice user manual on. Got the 12 month warranty, guarantee, non-human damage, 12 month warranty. And I have actually, I've never had to contact Royal Clutch support. I, I, I mean, honestly, I probably, it's one of the brands besides maybe Red Dragon that I have the most boards of and knock on, well, knock on wood, I haven't had one die on me yet. So I've never needed to reach out to Royal Clutch support. Not that doesn't mean that I'm sure there's people that have had issues. And I think I have read of some issues, but I haven't experienced it myself. So um, I have directed people to the RK support. And for the most part, it's been positive feedback. Got a nice user guide card. It's nice and big letters. Um, for those of us getting older, that's uh, much appreciated, uh, but it has all of the multimedia functionality, secondary, second day, combination function keys, backlight control, and a layout of how it's originally mapped as we have, instead of a four key, we have a three key navigation column and then the knob. So we also have a standard wire switch and keycap port and it is branded Royal Clutch. We have a standard USB-A to USB-C rubberized cable. And we have a little goodie bag. We actually have a spudger tool or an opening tool to get the case open. So they expect people to go in there and modify it, which I think that's pretty cool. But we also have some extra switches. And if I'm not mistaken, I'll correct myself in the um, technical section if I'm wrong, but I actually purchased some of these because I actually like them. They're, I think they're Royal Kludge creams but they have that cream body. They do have a long pull stem and they have a, a heavier weight. I forget, I wanna say 47 to 55, somewhere in that range, but it's a very decent long pull linear. Um, it's one of the first non-standard like red, yellow, brown, blue Royal Clutch switches that I've seen. And like I said, I actually picked up, I wanna say I picked up a set of a hundred around 14, $15 from AliExpress. And I know I loaded them up on another keyboard, but I can't recall at the moment. So we do have some extra switches, which is always appreciative um, because we never know what might go wrong. Uh, we could break the pin on one. We could drop one behind our desk and not want to move everything to get to it. A number of things. So having those extra switches is a big plus and it's quite truly appreciated. And here we are with the Royal Kludge R65. As we can see, Royal Kludge not only includes extra switches, they also include a very nice fit to form dust cover. Um, 
I'll keep on saying this, but maintaining a dust cover on your keyboard when not in use is going to ensure that you're going to get the longest life possible out of your keyboard because it's going to prevent it from getting dirty in spots that might be hard to reach and, you know, eventually either corroding or messing with connections inside of the PCB or even just getting in there with the switches and causing trouble. So we have a nice shape to form. It would have been nice to see an, a little RK on there or something, but we do know that it, it, it fits this one. So, so if you don't have too many 65% boards with a knob, this should be able to point it out real quick what it goes to. But thank you for including this as well, RK. That's much appreciated. So here we have the RK R65. We have a pretty standard layout um, with the one and a quarter uh, modifier keys on both sides of the space bar. We have a blocker here with lights, and I'm sure that that'll tell us what the lights mean. Oh, it looks like the top lights is caps lock. The middle light appears to be win lock, and the bottom light appears to be charging. Now, I do have to say I have a couple of keyboards that are like this with the two-tone with an outside case color and an inside. I love the two-tone. I'm a big fan of two-tone, especially when it's colors like this. The, the blues on this, the beige on this, the white on the outside, everything is nice, clean looking. We have a 2.4 dongle that is branded with RK, which is also another... <laughs> it's like they, they've they been watching my videos and paying attention and taking notes because that this is one thing that I truly appreciate. I have a few more keyboards than probably the average um, enthusiast, but even somebody that may have, you know, a few boards that have 2.4 gigahertz dongles, let alone getting into mice, when you have a dongle that doesn't have branding on it, you don't know what it goes to. But when you have branding on it, it's going to be much quicker and easier to find where it goes, um, especially if it doesn't have a pocket. But I'm very appreciative of it having a pocket because that's usually where it's going to go and where it's going to stay. Now, <clears throat> One thing I noticed here, I don't know if this was done on purpose, I, when I saw it like this flipped upside down, but I noticed that the B and the G are actually meant to be read in this direction because if you're reading it like this, they're actually upside down. So, I mean, this is just a sticker and it's no big deal, but I want to make sure if I put it into Bluetooth mode, I put it into, yeah. That's uh, actually, that's what it goes to. All right. Well, all right. So, yeah, this is blue, B is Bluetooth and G is for the 2.4. I was able to test that, but we can see that we have some really nice, bright RGBs. And yes, I have cat hair. But we're going to turn it off for right now while we inspect everything else. So, we have a two tone kind of case inside of a outer case, or the top case is kind of slid inside of the um, bottom case. It has a really nice, uh, but subtle, like, I like logos like that. Because, I mean, I can read it up close, but up far, it looks cool, but it's not like, you know, I'm wearing a t-shirt and advertising for a company, because I think that's why most people like taking logos off. It's, uh, it just messes with the aesthetic. But here, the fact that it's nicely faded is actually, I think, quite nice. And it's, I, I don't personally don't see any reason to remove it myself. And I like how that blue from the top continues down here at the blue from the bottom. Um, we've got some nice rubberized feet, and we've got two fold-out legs to give us an option of three different typing angles. We have what feels like an aluminum knob. It is a D-shaped knob. It's going to be the six millimeter D knobs will replace. This should fit just about any of these uh, six millimeter D knobs. Obviously, this one's taller because it has a um, doesn't have as much of a depth or collar. We, we would be able to replace it with practically any six millimeter D potentiator meter knobs. And we do have a very nice, clean looking um, legends on the keycaps. Uh, they were pretty standard to what we'd see with, I'd say, mid range. Um, keycap sets they're not obviously top of the line but they're not bottom of the barrel either they're a decent set to get on a pre-built keyboard 
Now let's take a look at heat camps. So we do have double shot, what feels like PVT. And let's see how they measure up. 1.6 millimeters. That is very decent thickness for pre-built key caps. Um, I, I've got to say that's uh, that's better than a lot of other pre-builds that have you know 1.2, 1.3, maybe 1.4. That's usually 1.4 is the highest end. But as of late, I've been seeing a lot more thicker key caps. And the thicker the key cap, for one, the longer it's going to last you. Um, but it's also going to provide more of a deeper sound. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can still get clacky if you build it right, but it's going to be more of a more well-defined sound, in my opinion. And again, we've got these, uh, like I said, I want to call them Royal Clutch Creams, though. I think they do have another name. I'll have to look that up, but they are branded with the RK. They are long pull. They are linear, medium weight. Now we do have some plate mounted stabilizers that are actually wow yeah they're well attached they're not going anywhere these are going to be the kind that are, yeah they're even a little tight to pull up the the tolerances on these are very nice let's see yeah we've got lubrication inside of the stem and we have lubrication at the elbow the two spots i think that are important to lube on stabilizers if we take a peek down in there, it does not look like we have the ability for, no, I think I'm seeing something else, does not appear that there is um, the possibility for screwing stabilizers, but on the PCB, we do have the Hi-Fi layers with the PET layer above the PCB and the IXPE layer above that. And then we can see that we have the polycarbonate gasket mounted plate, which is really nice it's, that this is, some of the first RK boards that are doing gasket mounting with PC plates. And uh, I think they, in my opinion, from what I've seen so far, they're doing a pretty good job because not only are these plates well, well machined, the tolerances are perfect for the plate mounted stabilizers because we don't have the option. So we want to make sure that we've got good stabilizers. But as you can see, we have a good amount of flex on the plate, but, but we're not like, bouncing on a trampoline. So it's going to provide a stable, solid, yet softer typing experience. I, like I've said times before, I find typing on a tray mounted keyboard, though I spent the majority of my life typing on tray mount keyboards, to be tiresome after about two hours. I start to feel it in my wrist and my hands and my joints. But I can go twice as long on a gasket mounted keyboard and I'll still feel because I kind of use, sometimes kind of use a, my hand pain as a gauge and I'll be like, well, oh, I've been working for four hours now. Why aren't my hands hurt? Ah, because I'm using a gasket mounted board. So not all ga gasket mountings are the same. So I prefer something that isn't too bouncy. I don't want to feel like my fingers are on a trampoline. Um, bouncing off because it's just too many flex cuts uh, honestly i like flex cut, cut plates but i'm just not the biggest on flex cut pcbs but that's just me that's just me everyone will have their own opinion this to me is the right amount of firmness and the right amount of softness so it's something that or i know i would enjoy using for long periods of time without having to experience unnecessary pain so if you are a coder like me or you're someone that uses a keyboard a lot and you find your hands hurting after you know a certain amount of time on a regular basis and you're using a tray mounted keyboard i'd highly highly suggest picking up a gasket mounted keyboard i mean you can go and just find a cheaper gasket mounted keyboard see the difference and then you know actually build one out or just go for broke because I think that anyone that uses a keyboard for more than just a few minutes every day is going to appreciate how using a gasket mounted keyboard is so much better on one's hands. I mean, obviously wrist rest is important as well. So if you're using a keyboard, use a wrist rest. And if you're going to be typing on it for some time, try a gasket mount. 
trust me, I think it'll make a difference that you will appreciate. Anyway, so we have a very solid design. It is a compact 65%. Nothing is blown out. So we don't have any extra spaces here. We, we do have this three key navigation column, which for me works perfect because I do function delete for insert, function page up for home, function page down for end. So it has all the keys that I need in order to get going. Um, usually you're gonna have shift escape or function shift escape for the tilde key, um, but we'll have to see once we get into it. And again, we'll have to check out about the QMK source. Anyway, so we have a keyboard that sounds really nice. It's definitely on the clackier side, but those switches, I know I use them on another board. I got them specifically for a board. I'll have to remember. I haven't really gotten to, to do the video yet. That's why I can't remember, but it was for a clacky build because these are on the clackier side but they have a nice poppy, fun resonance to them. So we have a very nice looking keyboard. Now the, this is available, I wanna say in two or three different colorways. Um, I picked the blue, I am partial to blue. And I gotta say, I love this. Um, it's kind of like a mix between a Dolch and oh, I can't remember the name of the other set, but I love that it's beige. I almost wish that the keyboard itself, the white part was beige or an e milky white, but I actually like the contrast because the white is in the uh, legends of the dark keycaps. But it's the colors, everything really nice. Would I have liked to see alternates of these three keys so that I could match them? Yes, but that's just me and OCD. Um, I will be coming back to this RK as well as a few RK boards that I have coming up and we will be, well, I'll be doing upgrades to them to see how different I can make them sound, feel, look. Um, I can't wait to get maybe some U4Ts in here and some SA keycaps and just make this a, a Thok monster. <laughs> but I've got to say out of all the RK keyboards that I've reviewed, this one is probably my favorite so far. Like I said, I've got some other ones coming up, so that may change here soon. But as far as the design, the two-tone, just the all of the lines, I kind of find this interesting, honestly. I mean, because most people are going to flip it up like this. So does this make more sense? Because it's not like we're going to, you know, sneak around back and, you know, look at it while it's sitting on, on the surface. Because even if it's sitting this way, you know, we'd have to like creak our heads down. But so I kind of, I kind of think that makes sense. <laughs> it's kind of growing on me. And the fact that this was flipped upside down, that's how I put it back that way. So honestly, this is going to be added to my list of 65% keyboards that I quite enjoy. I'm, in, I'm working right now on a 75% aluminum uh, tier list, but there's also some nice 65% plastic keyboards. I, I've been meaning to do this every year and just time passes by way too quick. <laughs> I don't have time, but this is definitely a 65% that I'd recommend because it is nice looking, has nice features. It has a pretty good sound out of the box that I think a good portion of people will be fine with. But if you want to change how it sounds, how it feels, taking out replacing the switches is an easy thing it's something that can be done really quick just the specs today we are taking a look at the rk r65 a three mode 66 key 65 percent keyboard with a knob and qmk via there is also a wired version of this model it includes a gasket mounted pc plate on top of a three and five pin hot swap south facing pcb that includes hi-fi and dampening layers. It is preloaded with Royal Kludge Cream or Chartreuse linear switches, double shot PBT cherry keycaps. It is preloaded with a 4,000 milliamp hour capacity battery and comes weighing in at 677 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters while the back sits at 29, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. Flipping out the first set of full down feet will take the back height to 34 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to 11 degrees. 
clipping out the final set of included feet will take the back height to 40 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to 15 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $59.99 from Royal Kledge's store before discounts. Links below. All right, so to get to Via, I'm going to go ahead and include the links not only for the Via download page on Google Drive that has the pre-compiled hex or the firmware that's currently on here, but it also has the JSON Via file. I'm also going to include a link to the QMK repo. Anyway, so we see here that there's quite a few models, but today we are working with the RKR65 tribe mode version. So just for Via, all we're going to need to do is just go into that folder. Though it does give us a hint that there might be already or is coming or an ISO version is on the way. But we see that we have the firmware file and we have the layout for JSON file. So that's the one that we want to go ahead and download if we want to program in VIA. And once we have that file downloaded, we want to go to use VIA. We can go ahead and load the file that we just downloaded. Once that file has been dragged and dropped into that section, we can then select our keyboard or authorize it. It might pop up that it was already paired. And then you will see the primary screen for VIA. Here is where we can make all of our changes. We see that we have nine layers from zero to eight, and there's already a pretty good programming on the first three layers anyway. So we can go through here, and this will allow us not only to map a key on the first layer, map a function key on one of the function layers, and we can either toggle layers on and off. That means the entire keyboard changes over to that layer or we can do momentary MO, which allows us to do a key combination of a function and a key, and will give us what's on that momentary layer that we've selected. Now, we also have the ability to select our lighting modes, the brightness, the effect, the speed, the color, and we see that we can program the knob. Not only can the knob be programmed on under layers, but it can be programmed on the primary or the top layer as well which is a nice thing, though most of my keyboards with knob do allow you to do that. Now, I do plan on doing a more in-depth video on how to use Via, its editor, everything like that. And then I'm going to be doing a QMK video. I'm going to try to make it not too technical. We can see here, and I'll, I'll provide the link down in the description, that I have a link to a QMK hub that has an RK folder. And that RK folder has quite a few RK boards listed. Now, I just recently got this. Um, I want to give Blot uh, the credit. He shared this with me. I was trying to help him out with an issue with the R87, and I have the I Love BB87, which is in this folder as well. Uh, and we're still kind of working on that. It just has to do with lights. It's not really a functional issue. But I do want to thank Blot for uh, sending me this link. He did get it from RK. I asked them for it and I got the link to Google Drive, which was not the source. But either way, I'm going to dig into this repository and see what I can learn from it um, and see if there's any of the keyboards that are already listed on there because I know there's a couple that I have and I'm wondering if they can be flashed, you know, retroactively because I mean, most of these have come in just the last two to three months. So, but the thing that I am seeing with a lot of these boards is that there appears to be either already made or in the process ISO versions of a lot of these, which is, I think, a, a big, going to be a positive thing for a lot of folks out there. It's going to be nice to see ISO versions of these keyboards. I got I to gotta believe they already exist and they're just not out yet, or I just haven't come across them because I mean, they've already written it, so... You'd assume they've already tested it on an actual functioning keyboard. Anyway, like I said, we have a really nice 65% that I think the majority of the people are going to be happy taking this out of the box, plugging it in, and going. Um, for the folks that you know have never used a keyboard without a function row, function 1 through function 12. You just got to hit one more key to get to it. But if you really need that function row, then you can get the 75%. Like I said, I'll be taking a look at the R75 here shortly so and i'm i'm gonna guess that it has very similar construction it's going to be very similar quality and functionality wise but i really am happy with the direction that royal kludge is taking the market in 
They are delivering keyboards now. They're listening to a certain degree. I'm like, are they listening to my videos? But I know I'm not the only one saying these things about, you know, hey, keyboards need to have QMK source. You know, people want to be able to program their keyboard in Maya, in, in their own operating system through Maya without having to, you know, have a physical Windows machine or make a virtual Windows machine. So they're listening and I think they're going to find that it's going to pay off in dividends because I, I'm i going to pick a QMK keyboard. If I'm buying it and, you know, I'm, I got two choices and they're basically, you know, roughly the same price. But one's a QMK keyboard, one's not. I'm going to pick the QMK by a keyboard over the other one. But I run Linux. But how many of you guys out there run an operating system other than Windows, whether it be Linux or Mac, it's nice to be able to program your keyboard in the operating system that you natively use. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the RKR65 with the cream or chartreuse. I've seen them listed both ways, cream and chartreuse, but they're the RK creams. I think it's just easier to say. Um, switches i do hope that you enjoyed this review if you have any questions comments or things you'd like for me to take a look at once i come back to this keyboard open it up and probably mod it let me know down in the comment sections below a thumbs up a subscribe really does go a long way and it is really truly appreciated so to everyone out there in youtube land i want to wish you a beautiful rest of your day and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on